To better understand the effect capacitors and inductors have on electric circuits, it is useful to think in terms of analogous mechanical systems. This tutorial will help you to understand these analogies and develop a more intuitive feel for these circuit elements. First, a brief qualifier. I want to be a little sloppy with my signs, that is my positive and negatives, so don't worry too much about that. I want you to follow along mostly just with the logic of what I'm talking about. Consider a simple spring. If I apply a force to this spring, we can compress it, and the force of that spring, as you recall from last semester, is given by kx, the spring constant, times x, the displacement of the spring as it's being compressed. We can calculate the work we do compressing that spring as the integral of force over distance, kx integrated over the distance traveled. And that gives us the energy stored in the spring, 1 half kx squared. Now let's consider a simple capacitor circuit. Here I've got a battery, resistor, and capacitor connected by a switch. If I close the switch, I will immediately begin charging up the capacitor. And I can then calculate the voltage across this charged capacitor as being equal to the charge on that capacitor divided by the capacitance, Q over C. In charging up the capacitor, of course, I've done work, and I've put energy into the capacitor. The work I've done is the integral of the voltage over the charge moved. The voltage in this case is simply Q over C. And if I apply the math, that gives me a total energy stored in the capacitor of 1 half 1 over C Q squared. Notice this is very similar to the potential energy we had stored in the spring. Indeed, in both of these systems, we have an energy of configuration. That is, the potential energy is stored due to how we've arranged the systems. In this case, how we've compressed the spring, or in the electrical case, of how we've moved our electrons around on the surface of the capacitor. So we can make these analogies. Force in the spring is analogous to the voltage on the capacitor. The spring constant is analogous to 1 over the C. And position in the spring is analogous to charge in the capacitor circuit. Now let's consider a different analogy. Suppose I have some mass, M, and I simply apply a force to it. If there is nothing to hold the mass in place, I'm going to accelerate that mass and create kinetic energy. 1 half mv squared. If I want to know how much power I'm applying to this mass, I can simply take the time derivative of the kinetic energy, and that will give me mv times dv dt, simply applying the chain rule. Or mv times a. Recalling Newton's second law, I can rewrite this as force times velocity. Now, let's consider the equivalent electrical circuit. In this case, I have a battery connected to an inductor through a switch. When I close the switch, current will begin to flow, and I'll create a magnetic field inside the inductor. Hence, I'll be transferring energy from the battery to the inductor. The energy in the inductor is given by this expression, 1 half Li squared where L is the inductance, I is the current squared. I can find the power being delivered by taking the time derivative of this expression, and that gives me the following, inductance times current, di dt. If I recall that in general, for any electrical element, the power is equal to voltage times current, I can rewrite this expression as the voltage across the inductor times I gives me the power. Looking at these two systems together, we see that both of them have energy of motion. In the mechanical system, 
the mass has kinetic energy due to its velocity. For the electrical system, the inductor has magnetic energy due to the motion of the charges. Here we see how mass in the mechanical system is equivalent to inductance in the electrical system. The reason why the mass doesn't instantly acquire some vast velocity is because it has inertia that resists the motion. Similarly, with the electrical system, the reason why the current doesn't instantly go to infinity is because the inductance provides inertia to the system, keeping the current from growing too quickly. We can also see how velocity in the mechanical system is comparable to current in the electrical system, and how the time derivative of position is comparable to the time derivative of charge, or equivalently, position is comparable to charge. In the, electrical, in the mechanical system, force is comparable to voltage in the electrical system. Recalling the Newton's second law, we can say F equals MA, or dV dt. The comparable version of the second law for the electrical system is voltage is equal to L di dt. I can bring these components together to create a more interesting system. Consider the mass on the end of a spring. As energy is transferred from the mass, containing kinetic energy, to the spring with its stored potential energy, we will cause an oscillation. This oscillation will take place at a characteristic frequency, omega naught, equal to the square root of k over m. Equivalently, I can create a system using an inductor and a capacitor. In this case, energy will tr constantly be transferred from stored energy in the electric field of the capacitor to stored energy in the magnetic field of the inductor. Using the analogies we discussed, what will be the characteristic frequency of this system? Such simple harmonic oscillators are incredibly useful things. Consider an old-fashioned pocket watch. This consists of a balance wheel, or a mass, connected to a coil spring. The resonant frequency of the system sets the going rate of the pocket watch. Equivalently, I can combine an inductor with a capacitor to set the resonant frequency of my radio receiver. By changing the capacitance, or the inductance, I can select which station I would want to listen to. There's one more analogy I want to point out. Consider a mass on the end of a spring. Except this time, I want to place this mass inside some viscous fluid. This is going to create a damping force on the mass, F equal minus BV where B is the damping coefficient of the material, basically a measure of how viscous this material is. For instance, honey is more viscous and it have a far larger B value than water. Because of this damping, an oscillation will slowly damp out over time. What would be the analogous electrical circuit? What expression would be analogous to this expression right here describing the force of damping? 